Good morning, Kuro! My name is Bongani Bingwa, and it really is my great pleasure to be your host and speaker as we honor the class of 2020. I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled to be speaking to you. This is my fifth year doing this. And uh, really thank you to the Kuro leadership team for inviting me to come and speak once again. Normally, as you know, we would be at a gala function at Emperor's Palace. It would be full of glitz, it would be full of glamour. But obviously due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the current lockdown restrictions in South Africa, we simply could not take the chance. Uh, and so we were left with no choice but to cancel our annual event at Emperor's Palace. But nonetheless, we are still going to recognize an extraordinary crop of learners, an extraordinary group of young people who against all the odds have done as well as we would have expected, if not even better. So around Kuro schools, around South Africa, right now on this day, uh, many of you are watching this pre-recorded broadcast to celebrate exactly that. And it's just absolutely fantastic to be able to do it. Uh, but before we do anything else, let me acknowledge the leadership team at Kuro, the executive heads, the management, everybody who is a part of really keeping this machine well-oiled in terms of producing South Africa's future leaders. But I also want to welcome all of you, class of 2020. You are the reason we are doing this. You are the reason we are here. And we really, really want to once again applaud you and we want to celebrate you. Well done for all your achievements. But what also makes this year special is that we're not only watching this uh, pre-recorded broadcast at various Kuro schools around the country, but we're also streaming this on Facebook, on a number of social media platforms. And that's really been the story of 2020, has it not? We've been able uh, to live stream uh, so much of what we've been able to do both in the school environment, but even outside. And some of those moments are all over Facebook, they're all over Instagram, and that is the new world in which we live. So yes, we may not all be in the same room right at this moment, but in a sense, we are more together than ever before. So I want to extend a special welcome then to all our NSC and our IEB learners and really once again congratulate you on the path that you've been through to get to your final exams because all of this is in honor of you. But also to the teachers, to the caregivers, to the parents, the aunties, the uncles, the grandparents, whoever you are in the life of the class of 2020, this is for you too. Without any further ado then, I'm now going to invite Mr. Andres Hreiling, the CEO of uh, the Curo Group, who will come and do a short presentation and a word of welcome. Kiro friends, family, and most importantly, the class of 2020. Under normal circumstances, in a normal world, I would have greeted you in a normal manner at the beginning of a normal year. But 2020 taught each one of us that normal, like as so many other things, is not in our control. You, the class of 2020, are a special group. Your matric year was not in your control. Nothing about it was normal either. Trust me, I know. I am the proud father of a 2020 matriculant. A young woman sitting right here with all of you. Last year I saw her battle daily. She too wanted to normalize the abnormal, to make a matric year as memorable as possible. It was not easy, believe me, but here we are. And in the words of our great leader Nelson Mandela, I say to you, it always seems impossible until it is done. There are four things that I've tried to teach my children and their friends about control. A lesson someone taught me years ago. Try to control what you think. Be the CEO of your brain. Ask me, being a CEO is not easy. 
But as soon as you realize that your thoughts are your thoughts, things get better. Nobody is going to feel wonderful if they entertain the thought that they are a failure and boring. Soon others will doubt you and you will become a boring failure. Happiness and achievement depends on your attitude. Grab opportunities. Be positive. Talk to everyone you can. Learn when you get the chance and value your family. Don't be the victim. Try it. Think yourself wonderful. Sitting here, you all have every reason to think just that. In the words of one of my heroes, Steve Jobs, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. My second thought, control what you say. I often land myself in trouble as I speak my mind. Some things need to be left unsaid. Learning to control what you say is a slow and painful process. Those of you who know your Bible will know that there are a lot of stories of people remaining silent. Jesus remained silent in front of his accusers. It was not the time to lay out the facts of the matter and it probably would not have done any good either. Each day you say many words. Think what you say. Focus on positive words because no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. In the words of Robin Williams, things go wrong every day for everyone. The difference is how you respond. Life is an echo. What you send out comes back. That is true for positive and negative thoughts. My third view on self-control is control what you look at. I am not going to pretend that I know what is going on on Instagram, TikTok, Ripsmash, YouTube or Byte. I don't. I am at the age now where I know my time is precious and I only look at things that will add value and not land me in trouble. Try it. Control what you look at. You will be surprised at what else there is in the world. Respect yourself. Be careful what goes into your body and your mind. Just as what you eat is what you are, what you think is what you become. Look for opportunities to make a difference. My last point on self-control. Control where you go. For a while last year, we all walked the path of bedrooms, kitchens and bathrooms. That is where we went day in and day out. But now the world awaits. Although you might need to sit tight until 2023 before you wander abroad again. Whether you go, ask yourself whether your destination will be worth it. You all have different roads to walk in life. And as you take that first step, which you surely must do, make it confidently firm in your belief that you can make a positive contribution wherever your road takes you. Be true to yourself, honestly and kindly. The world needs good people. Remember, you do not have to have it all figured out right now. Plan, do, review, repeat, but keep moving. That is the important bit. Instead of you over planning, and trying to know the outcome before you start. It is more important to take the first step into the unknown. In the words of Dory, the little fish in the movie Nemo, just keep on swimming. For you, just keep on moving. Class of 2020, my message is simple. In a world that is out of control, practice self-control. It's not what you say to everyone else that determines your life. It's what you whisper to yourself that has the greatest power. To our parents, thank you for entrusting us with your most precious children. I know they will continue to make us proud. And finally, to the class of 2020, it was an honor to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Now let me invite uh, Mr. Andre Pollard, who is, of course, the executive for curriculum at Curo. He will do a short speech for the class of 2020. Learners, teachers, parents, heads of high schools and executive heads, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the CCMD, Curo Curriculum Management and Delivery Department. 2020 will always be remembered as an abnormal year with challenging circumstances, but also as a year during which personal development 
was forced to the next level. Teachers and learners reminded of and proved to us that, that no obstacle should ever stand in our way to success. Together, our learners, teachers, curriculum heads, heads of high schools and executive heads equally worked very hard to achieve these excellent results. And for that, I would sincerely would like to thank you. Circumstances differ at the different schools, but everybody worked together to prepare our learners for the final grade 12 examination. Parents, thank you very much for your tremendous support during your child's school career, and especially during a very challenging 2020. Thank you for being a loyal Kiru parent that we can always rely on. We really value our parents and your child's achievements would never be possible without your support. But today we honor our learners, or rather young adults, who now became past pupils and are ready for the next chapter in their lives. Our grade 12 learners of 2020 had to sacrifice many valuable events and had many more difficult circumstances than previous groups. Thank you for remaining positive and focused towards your main goal, and that was to achieve your best possible grade 12 results. In Kiri, our focus is not only to help our learners to achieve excellent academic results, we also do our very best to equip learners with skills that can make them successful in life. We constantly focus on our 21st century and IT skills which proved to be very valuable during 2020, where teachers and learners had to make use of these skills. We've learned a few lessons during your final year at school. Let's remember some of these lessons. And let's remember the following three. Always supply all the skills you've developed. Communicate and collaborate with others to make life easier for you. And keep your eyes on your goals. Congratulations on your excellent results. The class of 2020 will always be remembered for their guts and glory. You made us all very proud. You're now entering a different world with less protection from your school and less protection of your parents. Grab all the opportunities that come your way, but most of all, enjoy the ride. I would like to leave you with the following words. Push yourself, nobody else is going to do it for you. Dream it, wish it, and do it. I thank you. Thank you, Andre. So this is my fifth year of being invited to speak at uh, what I say is normally a prestigious gala event honoring the best of the best here at Curo. The highest achievers in basic education, I think not only at the Curo group, by the way, but across the country indeed. And it's always such a thrill for me to be amongst brilliant young minds. There are people who remember a time when life was easier, life was better for them, life was safer, and they don't like change. It scares them. It makes them feel like they're outsiders. They are no longer in charge and they're no longer the one thing they've become used to for most of their working life. They are no longer the smartest person in the room. In many cases, to be a talk show host at that age, you would typically have been a CEO, you might have had your hand in business in some form, or a politician or working behind the scenes as a functionary. You could even be a sports star or even indeed a teacher. So these are the sort of people who believe they know how the world works and that's why they have so much to say because but for the opportunity to be on radio in normal circumstances, they probably would likely be retired. But why is change scary to them? Well, what it really means is that the baton has passed on and it's passed on to young people like yourselves. Change means that the world is now in, in the hands of people who are unafraid, who are willing to try new things, to take risks and to change the world 
their world. But you know, the one thing about getting old is you don't see it coming. It doesn't announce itself. So I'm 47 years old at uh, this current age, but I don't feel any different from what I was when I was 27. Now, I know many of you watching this will already feel 27 itself was already ancient. Now, what has this got to do with you, class of 2020? Well, you have lived through one of the most confusing and challenging times in memory, really. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended life as we know it in the most unpredictable of ways. And it's not done with us. For most of you, the usual rites of passage as you come to the end of your schooling career were simply things you could not do, certainly not in the normal way. You couldn't perhaps do as many cultural evenings as you might have liked. You couldn't compete on the sporting fields in the ways that you would have liked. Uh, no matric farewells, no matric dances, or if they were, it's just something completely different to what we are used to. Even things as simple as debating clubs can't be held in quite the way we normally expect. So none of the things you would normally have had an opportunity to display your excellence in were you given an opportunity to do so. And so like these older people I've been describing, perhaps you too remember a time when things were kinder, when things were easier. And you may also feel in some sense like you're old because you'll be telling people in the future you remember a time when we didn't have to sanitize, when we didn't have to wear masks, when we didn't have to socially distance. So in many ways, you've grown up in ways even a year ago we simply could not have foreseen. I want to caution you not to be angry, not to be like those older talk show hosts I was referring to, whose views of the world are through a lens of negativity, a world in which they see nothing works, nothing is right, and especially everybody in authority is not to be trusted. In my line of work, it's easy to become cynical and jaded. Both as a television journalist, but as a radio talk show host, I'm exposed to the worst of the worst. If there's a corruption story, I know about it. If there's an individual who's stolen money, I know about it. If the amount runs into the millions, I know about it. If the sewage spilling down the streets of some place in South Africa, trust me, I've heard about it. And it's easy when you hear these stories day in and day out to become jaded and cynical. So why do I come here? Why do I come whenever I'm invited by the Curo Group to speak to that particular year's matric learners? I'd like to believe I come because when I come and speak to a room of grade 12 learners, it's almost as if, for me, the world has pressed the reset button. Because you are the ones who are about to embark on your careers. You are the ones who are about to go and face a future that you are one day going to be in charge of and that I believe you are going to make better. What is this future that we face in a time of pandemic? What is this future that we face in a time of uncertainty? I mean, we talk about getting back to normal, but will we really ever get back to normal? When will we stop wearing masks and social distancing? Will we ever really? Maybe none of us can control that. But I'll tell you what you can control. It's the power of hope. It's that sense that if you believe in yourself, if you work hard enough for something, you can achieve it. And if you're watching this broadcast, you already know some of that. Not everybody, perhaps, will be in the seat where you are. Not everybody will have achieved what you have. And so already, just by being part of this process, you know if you believe enough and you work hard enough for something, you can achieve it. It's very simple. 
we get only one shot in this life. When you leave high school, you really do enter the big league. You enter the grown-up world. And the grown-up world isn't kind. The grown-up world isn't always going to protect you. It's going to offer some knocks. It's going to offer some disappointments. You will get your feelings hurt. You may get thrown off course and take a detour. See, you may, use, you may be used to being special. You may be used to being the top achiever of those around you. That may stop. You may be used to being a big fish in what is relatively a small pond. When you go out into the world, you will soon find it's a big, big world. Many of you will be going to university to pursue your dreams. No doubt you've had conversations with your parents who have said, be careful what you choose to study. Whatever you do, always make sure you have something to fall back on. But guess what? Falling back on something means you are going to fall. I want you to think of it not so much as falling back on something, but perhaps as falling forward, because at least then you know what you're going to hit. And talking of hitting, 2020 smacked us right in the face, did it not? Some of us will be watching this and we will know someone who got sick. Some of us will know somebody who went to hospital and perhaps didn't come out. That's what life is all about in the big, big world. It has highs, but it also has lows. It has peaks, but it also has valleys. And here you are today to celebrate some of those peaks, some of those achievements. But in all the years I've addressed learners from Curo, none of them have had to contend with what the class of 2020 has had to deal with. So you've shown you've got the right stuff. You've shown you've got what it takes. But I also want to tell you it's not yet over. If there's one thing you remember from what I say to you today, it's never over. Your best days are still ahead of you. You will go off to university and hopefully you will learn skills for which one day you may be paid handsomely for. But what university, what college will not teach you is your mission. It will not teach you the why. It will not teach you the reason you were put on this earth. That's what you have to figure out in the next few years. Nothing else you do in your life will make sense until you understand why you were put on this earth. You know, in my career, I've met some of the world's most extraordinary people. I've interviewed best-selling authors, prime ministers, presidents. I've interviewed musicians who fill out stadiums. I've interviewed Olympic gold medalists, billion-dollar company entrepreneurs, international people, people who have changed the course of history. I've been lucky to have that job. One of the things I have asked them often is why did they do it? Why did they do what nobody else has done? Why did they do what people said could not, perhaps even should not be done? And almost always the answer is they had to do it. Richard Branson said nothing else would have made sense in his life. Tony Blair told me he had to do it. Nelson Mandela told me if he didn't do it, who would? These were people who felt compelled to act in the way that they did and to then pursue their dreams and their goals. Steve Harvey says, you have to find your gift. And he says, your gift is that thing that you do best with the least amount of effort. That thing which you do best with the least amount of effort. He doesn't say it's the thing you don't have to practice. 
He doesn't say it's the thing that perhaps won't require patience. It will require passion and it will require commitment. Find your gift and then align it with your why. Align it with your purpose, with why you believe you were put on this earth. And then you have to remember, not everybody will see it in you. And that's okay. Because when somebody says they cannot see anything good in you, if it wasn't the time of COVID, I would say to you, give them a hug and tell them, it's very rough in this world for people who are blind. And now let us meet the top achievers of the class of 2020, all of whom are going to be receiving this trophy in recognition of their incredible achievements in an extraordinary time. The top achievers for Preston College for 2020 are Lune Marie Adler, achieved five A's for Afrikaans first additional language, mathematics, life orientation, life sciences, and physical sciences. Lune Marie achieved 90% or more in one of her subjects, achieving an average of 82.57%. Claire Haskins achieved five A's for English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, life orientation, EGD, and life sciences. Claire achieved 80% or more in five of her subjects, achieving an average of 84%. Alison Spencer achieved five A's for English home language, Afrikaans first additional language, life orientation, EGD, and life sciences. Alison achieved 80% or more in five of her subjects, achieving an average of 79.86%. Emily Wyatt Minter achieved five A's for Afrikaans first additional language, life orientation, consumer studies, dramatic arts, and visual arts. Emily achieved 80% or more in five of her subjects, achieving an average of 79.71%. We congratulate the top achievers from Creston College. The Curo IEB top 10 achievers for 2020 are from St. Dominic's Newcastle, Nicole Downs, achieved an overall average of 90.14%, and is number 10 in the country. Nicole achieved 90% and more in four of her subjects. She achieved 90% for life orientation, 93% for accounting, 94% for mathematics, and 95% for Afrikaans first additional language. Nicole is in the top 1% IEB candidates nationally for Afrikaans first additional language. From Kuro Hermanus, Jean Waite achieved an overall average of 90.14% and is number 10 in the country. Jean achieved 90% and more in five of his subjects. He achieved 90% for physical sciences, 93% for Afrikaans first additional language, 95% for advanced math, 96% for IT, and 100% for mathematics. Jean is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for mathematics, advanced math, and IT. From Kuro Langaban, Anya Schultz achieved an overall average of 90.29% and is number nine in the country. Anya achieved 90% and more in four of her subjects. She achieved 90% for Afrikaans home language, 91% for accounting, 93% for mathematics, and 96% for life orientation. Anya is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for life orientation. Anya receives an IEB commendable achievement for achieving within the top 5% in five subjects. From Kuro Hazeldean, Michael Kotze achieved an overall average of 90.86% and is number eight in the country. Michael achieved 90% and more in four of his subjects. 
he achieved 92% for Afrikaans first additional language, 92% for geography, 94% for accounting, and 99% for mathematics. Michael is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for geography and mathematics. Michael receives a commendable achievement for being within the top 5% in 5 subjects. From Kuro Hillcrest, Megan McGall achieves an overall average of 91.86% and is number 7 in the country. Megan achieved 90% and more in 5 of her subjects. She achieved 90% for English home language, 94% for mathematics, 94% for life orientation, 97% for accounting, and 97% for business studies. Megan is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for accounting, business studies, and English home language. Megan receives a commendable achievement being within the top 5% in 5 subjects. From Kuro Heritage House, Nerav Durgapeshat achieves an overall average of 92% and is number 6 in the country. Nirav achieved 90% and more in 5 of his subjects. He achieved 91% for IT, 93% for mathematics, 93% for physical sciences, 95% for life orientation and 98% for EGD. Nirav is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for EGD, life orientation and physical sciences. From Kuro Clarkstor, Masiha Ahmed achieved an overall average of 93.29% and is number 5 in the country. Masiha achieved 90% and more in 7 of her subjects, achieving 92% for English home language, 92% for life orientation, 92% for physical sciences, 93% for life sciences. 94% for Afrikaans first additional language, 94% for mathematics, and 96% for geography. Masia is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for Afrikaans first additional language, consumer studies, English home language, geography, and life sciences, and receives an outstanding achievement being within the top five in six or more subjects. From Grant Lee, Sayuri Naidu, achieving an overall average of 94.14% and is number 4 in the country. Sayuri achieved 90% and more in 8 of her subjects. She achieved 92% for English home language, 93% for Afrikaans first additional language, 93% for life orientation, 93% for CAT, 94% for physical sciences, 96% for advanced math, 96% for accounting, and 98% for mathematics. Sayuri is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for accounting, CAT, English home language, mathematics, and physical sciences. From Kuro Aurora, Nicole Krauser achieved an overall average of 94.29% and is number three in the country. Nicole achieved 90% and more in seven of her subjects. She achieved 90% for English home language, 91% for life sciences, 91% for physical sciences, 94% for life orientation, 96% for Afrikaans first additional language, and 99% for accounting, and 99% for mathematics. Nicole is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for accounting, Afrikaans first additional language, English home language, life sciences and mathematics. Nicole receives an outstanding achievement being within the top 5% in 6 or more subjects. From Woodhill College, Catherine de Klerk achieved an overall average of 94.57% and is number two in the country. Catherine achieved 90% and more in six of her subjects, achieving 91% for life sciences, 93% for life orientation, 96% for accounting, 96% for physical sciences, 98% for mathematics, 
and 99% for Afrikaans' first additional language. Catherine is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for accounting, Afrikaans' first additional language, life sciences, mathematics and physical sciences. Catherine receives an outstanding achievement being within the top 5% in six or more subjects. From Woodhill College, Rachel Fonsale achieved an average of 94.71% and is number one in the country. Rachel achieved 90% and more in six of her subjects. She achieved 94% for life orientation, 94% for business studies, 95% for physical sciences, 97% for Afrikaans first additional language, and 98% for accounting, 99% for mathematics. Rachel is in the top 1% of IEB candidates nationally for accounting, Afrikaans first additional language, business studies, mathematics and physical sciences. Rachel receives an outstanding achievement being within the top 5% in six or more subjects. We congratulate the IEB top 10 candidates for 2020. The Kuro IEB School Awards for 2020 are the award for the Kuro School that participated in the 2020 Independent Examinations Board examination and achieved the highest increase in learners qualifying for bachelor's degree studies goes to Waterstone College with an increase of 22.9% from the previous year. The school with the most improved IEB results based on school average is Kuro Katu with an average increase of 4.61%. Three schools achieved academic excellence during the IEB examinations. These schools achieved a 100% pass rate. Bachelor's degree pass rate at least 88%. Percentage A averages at least 10%. Number of subject distinctions per candidate, a minimum of 1.5. Percentage candidates taking mathematics, minimum 60%, with mathematics average at least 65%. Percentage taking physical sciences, at least 40%, and learners achieving an average of above 60%, at least 75%. Grant Lee, St. Dominic's Newcastle, Wood Hill College. Merit Awards IEB Schools. These schools achieved a 100% pass rate, an average of at least 60%, a bachelor's degree pass rate at least 80%, percentage A averages at least 10%, number of subject distinctions per candidate, minimum 1.5. Mathematics average at least 60% and learners achieving an average of above 60% at least 65%. Kuro Hillcrest Kuro Hermanus Kuro Langaban Kuro Durbanville Kuro Aurora The top achieving academic IEB school for 2020 is... Grant Lee, achieving a school average of 71.96%. 97.67% of learners qualified for bachelor's degree studies. 22.09% of learners achieved an A average. 2.36 distinctions per learner. 91.9% .9 learners achieved an above C average. 53% of learners had physical sciences as a subject. 69% of learners had mathematics as a subject and the mathematics average was 67.4%. Every year, Kuro recognizes those learners who achieved academic excellence despite adverse circumstances. This year, this award goes to the class of 2020. After the challenges of 2020, we are proud to congratulate our 1,525 learners who wrote the IEB exams across 30 Kuro campuses nationally on an exceptionally 99.5%
pass rate. Furthermore, our top 10 IEB achievers all passed with averages above 90%. You are a special group. You managed to give up so much, but gained even more. Well done. What is a trick? I'm not really sure, but I think it's magic. Hello, Hello Matrix of 2020. We know this year wasn't the best year, but I'm pretty sure that 2021 will be better. All the best for next year, and we pray that God will bless you. Leave for light, and grip elke geleentheid and eidag wat voorle, met al by hande aan. May you have many more bright years ahead. Thank you for lighting the way and inspiring us to be the best we can be. Matrix, here is your last three now the great men's level. Well done, good job, bravo. And the winner is you. Dear Matrix, thank you for a wonderful year. And thank you for being an example for the secondary school and the high school. And please never forget about us because we'll never forget about you guys. You're awesome, you're amazing, and never stop dreaming. Keep shining. Matrix of 2020, I thank you for everything you've done for the school and I hope you have a good 2021 and I wish you all the best. Remember that one day when you will look back at this year and say, those were the days my friend. Hi Matrix, we're really, really proud of you for doing your great work and you are our number one. Keep fighting, dig deep and discover your true strength. Take the lead. Your care of family will support your endeavors. Dear Matrix of 2020, my name is Anna Lena and I am a grade one member. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your well deserved success. You are an inspiration to all your members. The sky is the limit. Good luck to you all and blessings for the future. Stay true to you and love yourself. God bless and I'm out. May you be guided by the stars. May your dreams become reality. When you close your eyes, let the night skies of shining beauty inspire your thoughts, empower you to think out of the box, and make the passion in you make a difference. Embrace who you are. From the great sevens of Kira Durbanville, always shine bright and good luck. Give me a smile that I can keep for a while in my heart while you're away. We are all powerful. So from all of us, good luck. Be well. We wish you all the best. We wish you well. We'll miss you. Tot ziens. We love you. Bye bye. Once again, class of 2020, Everything we have just seen and heard was all about you. We are here to honor you, to celebrate you, and to recognize what you have done. Your teachers, your mentors, your parents will have come to you in years past and told you how important your final year of school would be for your future. But none of them could have predicted how you had to do it, in the circumstances that you had to do it. Once again, a hearty congratulations. Go and pursue your future. Go and find your dreams. And may the road rise to meet you. Yeah.